Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can track the progress of a download you're making with Axios and use that information to update a progress bar on screen. So I've got a basic setup here where every time the page loads an image is being downloaded from the Unsplash API using Axios. So when I refresh you'll see a loading bar on screen letting you know how much progress has been made and this is a pure CSS loading bar so it's not the browser implementation and the good thing about a pure CSS bar is that it's going to be consistent across browsers. So this is what I'm going to be showing you how to implement in this tutorial. So let's get started with how you can track the progress of a download in Axios before we move on to the progress bar itself. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is, of course, import Axios into your project because it's a third party library. So I'm doing so here via a CDN link, and the CDN link is coming from cdnjs.com. So if you search for Axios up here, you'll be able to easily find this page. It's the first one that comes up. So once you've imported it, either by CDN link or installing it locally in your project folder, then I should have access to the Axios object, which has all the methods needed for making HTTP requests on it. So you see that it's returning a function here. So the import definitely worked. If it didn't, then you would get an error. So now that I have Axios, I can use it to make a get request to download something. And I'm going to make a request to the Unsplash image API endpoint, so that's pixel.photos, and then you specify the dimensions of the image that you want to download. So next I'm going to handle the result of the request. So Axios is promise based, meaning you can access its result using the then method, and then the result is available as a parameter inside the function you pass into then. So I'll use arrow syntax here. And if there's an error, then the function that you place inside the catch method fires. So again, with arrow syntax, and I'll just log that to the console for now. Now, if you try this, you're going to get a very odd result because Axios assumes when it gets something that it's going to be in JSON format. So it's going to try converting this image from JSON to a JavaScript object, and we're going to end up with something that looks like this. So the result is on the data property in the object that Axios has returned, but it's no good to us in this format. So what we need to do instead is to specify some options in an object in the second argument position inside the get method. So you can do it like this, or what I'm going to do instead because it separates out the object from the call itself, making it a little bit less messy, is to specify an options object. And then before I forget, in the second argument position, pass in the options object. So what you want to specify here is the response type. You want to set that as blob. So blob is just a file container. So what we're going to get is this image back in blob format. And from there, we can create a temporary URL out of it and set that as the SRC of an image. So before continuing, I noticed that there is a typo in response type, there should be an E there. So it's very important that you spell these properties correctly, also with the correct camel case, because otherwise Axios will not recognize them. So I'm going to come back to the handling of the blob in a moment. But very importantly, in the context of this tutorial, we want to track the download progress of the image. So for that, we create an on download progress function, and we create that here inside the options object. So we need to specify a new property there called on download progress. And the value of this should be a function. So what's going to happen here is every time there is some progress on downloading this image, Axios is going to fire this on download progress function. 
and that is going to give you some information periodically about the progress of the download. So the way it passes that information to you is via an automatically available event object. So I'm just going to log that to the console here and we'll run this in the browser and you'll see that I get several console logs as the image is downloaded from Unsplash. So for now, ignore this progress bar because we haven't programmed that. I will return to that. So you see that we've got quite a few logs to the console here. If we take a look at the first one, it has a loaded property on it specifying the number of bytes downloaded so far and a total property specifying the total number of bytes to be downloaded. So if we take a look at the last log to the console, okay, this is the data itself. So that's the result. So the last progress log was this one. So you see that it's loaded, the full amount here loaded and total are the same. And there's also a progress property here that specifies one here. That means the download is complete. At the beginning, if we look at the first log, you see it was almost zero. So you can calculate the download progress either as loaded divided by total bytes or by using the progress property. Now, I believe that this progress property is fairly new in Axios. So to be on the safe side, just in case you're using an older version, I'm going to calculate progress as loaded divided by total. So whichever way you do it, you're going to get the same result anyway. So first I want to get the value of loaded on the progress event object and divide that by the value of the total property. Now this is going to give me a value between zero and one and for a percentage to display to the user, I want a value between zero and 100. So to do that, I simply multiply this result by 100 and I'm also going to round that end result so that it's a whole number using math.floor. So that's going to give me a conservative estimate of the download progress. And I'm going to save a reference to this value that is the outcome as percent complete. And I'll log that to the console. And we should now see as the download progresses, a percentage complete being returned to us. So let's take a look at that now. So you see that that already ran. I'll refresh the page. So you see that for each download, it's returning a percentage complete periodically to me. That's great because I can now use this value to display to the user and also to update the progress bar. So let's take a look at the progress bar. So in the markup, there's a container, a progress bar. So this is the actual bar itself. And then there's the fill for the progress bar. So there's a distinction between the actual bar, which can be empty and the fill that goes inside of the bar. So the trick here is that the progress bar fill element will at first have a width of zero. So width of 0% relative to its parent progress bar. And as the download progresses, you want to update the width of progress bar fill. So it expands to fill the progress bar. So in order that you can see what I'm working with here in the CSS, so not much of it is actually essential for the progress bar. So on the wrapper, the width you need. So this is setting the width of the progress bar. And then the progress bar element is 100% width of its parent. So it's going to be 600 pixels. And then you just have some styling here. And then the fill is starting at a width of zero. And it's important that it has a display of block. And I've also added a transition here so that when the width changes, there will be an easing in and out, but this is optional. The important bit and the bit we're going to be manipulating here is the width of the fill to be 0% to 100% of the width of its parent, which is progress bar. So this is 600 pixels wide because it is 100% of its parent, which is the wrapper element. So what you want to do in JavaScript is to select 
the progress bar fill element. So that's a class. So I'm going to use the query selector for that. And I'll save a reference to that, which is a bit shorter. I'll just call that fill. Now inside the download progress function, what you're going to want to do is to manipulate the width of that element. So you can do that by saying fill dot style dot width. So that is going to equal percent complete. So I can just insert that there. Something you might also want to include is the percentage progress in text below the progress bar. So here you see I have a span with a class of progress text. So I'll select that also using the query selector. So for this, it's super straightforward. Just say text dot text content equals, and it's the same value as before. I just want to display the percentage complete as a string there. Okay, so let's take a look at this in the browser now. So it already ran, but hopefully when we refresh, we see the progress bar is working properly and the text percentage is also updating. For testing, you might also want to do this. I'm going to add some throttling. So that is just simulating an internet connection. So for that, you click on the network tab and I'm setting mine to a slow 3G. So let's test it now. So waiting for the download to start. And now you see that everything seems to be working just fine. The progress bar is filling. So the width is being updated inside the on download progress function and the text is also being printed correctly. Now there was a bit of a delay at the start, but that's because I'm using this slow 3G connection. If there's no throttling, then you notice that it all goes at a much quicker speed. Okay, so now where is our image? So I left that until last because it's not the focus of this tutorial. I wanted to mainly focus on the progress bar and text, but you can get the image from a blob and display it on the screen as follows. So at the moment, there's no image element in the DOM. So I'm going to create a new one here in JavaScript by calling the image constructor object. Now for the SRC for this image, I'm going to use a special method on the URL object that's on the global window called create object URL. So this accepts a blob and will create a temporary URL to it in the user's browser. So if you pass in a blob here, so you don't pass in just res, the payload, therefore the blob object, it's on res.data with Axios. And then finally, you want to append that image to DOM so you can see it. Now, something else you might want to do is when the download is complete to remove this entire markup from the DOM because you no longer need any of this progress stuff. So that is what I was doing in the preview. So I will do it here as well. So to do that, I simply select wrapper and then I remove the wrapper from the DOM. So I can do that by calling the remove method on it. That's going to remove the wrapper element and all of its content. So once the download is complete, all we should see is an image. So if I refresh now, you see that when the download is complete, we're losing all of that markup and we're seeing the image. And before that, our progress bar is working. I'll just slow that down again so we can see the final version in action. So I'll make it slow 3G again. So if it was a larger download, it would look something like this. User would get an accurate reading of how far it has loaded. And in this example, I removed all progress bar contents from the DOM. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. 
It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.